What's up, people? Happy Wednesday. Hope all you're having a great day. Today's episode, I thoroughly and uh, I, I enjoyed it. Today's episode was pretty good. My favorite scene, one of my favorite scenes today was the Sunny scene with the five families. So Sonny confronted them about somebody trying to hijack his shipment, trying to take over his territory. So Serge or Sergey, whatever his name is, I, I'm going to call him Sergey. Sonny confronted him because his shipment landed in Sergey's territory. Sergey said that he did business with some guy who sold it to him for pennies on a dollar. Um, but he doesn't know his name. He said the guy was a middleman for the for the boss. And Sonny wanted a name. Who's the middleman or who's the boss? Sergey said he didn't know. But he said the guy used to work for the Jeromes. So that's what really pissed Sonny off. I think whoever this person is, I think that they're trying to either frame the Jeromes or it's Ava going after Sonny. It could be either or. Who knows? Maybe she's behind the scenes planning this. We don't know. Um... But I think somebody is either trying to frame the Jerome, trying to make it seem like Julian lied about being in retirement because Sonny obviously doesn't trust Julian. And I think Sonny doesn't, you know, of course, Sonny don't believe him, but only time will tell. So Sonny was pissed, you know, and the other five families, you know, because they all have an alliance basically to call a truce and they all profit without, you know, and they could keep the peace without bloodshed, which I think is a smart thing to do. Um... So Sergey basically was getting out of pocket with Sonny, talking about Sonny overstayed his welcome. He needs to retire. Um, it's basically saying that it's time for Sonny to go as the Don of Port Charles. And, you know, Sonny wasn't having that shit. So Sonny and then he kept talking shit to Sonny, basically telling Sonny, oh, you know, you had Jason Morgan all these years doing your bidding and then he died and then you had Sean replace him and then he's in prison. So now you're by yourself, basically telling Sonny he's not shit without Jason or Sean. I laughed at that as soon as he said it. And Sonny laughed at it, too, because you know what Sonny did next? He pulled out that gun and shot that son of a bitch right there in the ground. Boom. I so laughed. I said, see, that's the Sonny Corinthos I know. Let me tell, let me school some people on something for those that don't know. Sonny held on to his territory long before Jason came to work for him. Sonny was a badass long before Jason came to work for him. Sonny was a badass long before Sean came to work for him. And Sonny continues to be a badass long after them. Sonny, that's why Sonny was always one of my favorite characters. See, it was the writers who made Sonny look soft and weak because they had Jason. Sonny was always the brains behind the operation. As a hitman, Jason's job, of course, was to carry out the order. That's what any mob boss would do. But don't get it twisted. Sonny is still a dangerous motherfucker with a gun in his hand. He could still drop you at any second. And he proved that today. So I applaud Sonny on that. Um. So anyway, Madeline came to see Nina or whatever, because Nina wants the phone so she could call Franco. And Madeline, she needs to go sit her old ass down. She keeps trying to get this girl money. It's not going to happen. Just go sit down. Like, seriously, why don't you go do what regular people do, bitch, and go get a job? How about that? And build your own fortune. How about that? Like, seriously, go work a stripper pole. Well, she might be too old. She can't drop it like it's hot, but she could definitely drop it down like it's warm. Maybe somebody will throw her a few pennies. Um, but Madeline needs to go sit down somewhere. Um, she's starting to irk me. I am so sick of the writers writing Nina as crazy as like Michelle Stafford is too good of an actress to be keep writing her as the one note character. Do something different with her or get rid of Michelle Stafford. Maybe that will free up some money to do other things. Like I hate when they waste good actors. Like it's annoying when they do that. You know, she can go to any other soap and they would give her better material. When she was on YNR, they didn't play her as this crazy bitch. So why is the writers up here keep portraying her as nuts? Like, seriously, do something different. Or I think Nina could be a force to be reckoned with in a business sense. Like maybe have her start her own company and go up against Cassidyne Industries or something. I think she could be very good in that position. But it's up to the writers to do something different with the character. And I think they should. I mean, it was OK when they brought her on as this psycho nut when she first came on. But that was over a year ago. 
it's a year later and she's still in the same position. Do something different or get rid of her. That's my thought. Um, so Kiki was basically going to fuck off on Franco because Franco lied to her. He came out of the apartment. He already knew that, you know, Silas was dead. But everything is not always what it seems in Port Charles. Definitely in Port Charles. Um, so I think she has her facts wrong about this, but I don't blame Kiki though. I mean, she has a right to feel the way she feel. Her father's dead and she's not thinking straight. She doesn't have time to think straight. So she's going to put the blame on anybody. And Franco looks about guilty. Um, he looks about guilty. So why not? So Jordan was questioning Franco or whatever. He basically told Jordan to go to hell. I don't know where they going with this storyline. My guess is Madeline did it. I don't think Ava did it, but Madeline did it more than likely. Because when Nina told Madeline that Silas was dead, Madeline didn't really give off a reaction. Like it kind of looked like she already knew. So something in the something in the milk ain't clean. Either she already knew or she just always got that blank look in her face like she just don't care. But she kind of looked like she gave no real reaction to Silas being dead. It was kind of like she already knew. She wasn't automatically shocked. You know, like, come on. That's like if I heard somebody, even if it's somebody I don't like, if I heard they suddenly were, were murdered, I would look shocked. I would give I wouldn't just stand there and give off no reaction. Like, even if you don't like the person. She just gave off, number one, she just kind of gave this vibe to me like she already knew. So that's why her reaction was just kind of, you know, whatever, basically. Um, Carly. Her scene with Morgan pissed me off the most. The way Morgan talked to Carly, telling her to stay the hell out of his business. I looked at Carly like, if you don't snatch this boy up. He's a grown man, I get that, but talking to her like that in her house, the house that he's staying in, and probably not paying rent. If that was me, I swear to God, and my kid ever talked to me like that, if Morgan would have ever talked to me like that, I'm going to tell you right now, he would be walking around with three shoes, two on his feet and one in his ass, I'm telling you right now. He would be probably a deer hanging up on the wall. You know, one of them deer heads in a cabin that hangs up on the wall, he would be right there right next to it looking like a fool. I don't understand some of these soap parents that just, and it's not just soap parents, those parents, some parents in real life that just let their kids talk to them like that. Um, no, I don't even care if you live on your own and pay your own bills. You're still not going to talk to me like that. I brought you in this world. I will damn sure take you out of it. It's like, seriously, some of these parents just act like they scared to snatch their kids up. Like, don't be scared. Don't worry about DCF. <laughs> I'm just saying, but he would have got fucked up. Um, and then on top of that, I would have packed up his bags and threw that shit out on the front lawn. If you're going to talk to me like that, you could sleep your ass outside on the sidewalk, not on my property, but on the sidewalk. Um, so anyway, I'm over this whole Denise shit. Like, seriously, I'm just bored with it. Like, I like the conversation that she, the scenes that she had with Julian, but it's like, come on now. Um... I wish Dante would have shut the hell up the way he was talking to Jordan about her bringing Franco out there to, you know, when the victim's daughter is standing here. Um, Dante, shut the fuck up. This is why you're not commissioner. You're the detective. Don't question your superior. Obviously, she did it for a reason. Now, shut the hell up. The Patrick and Sam scenes, I liked that. I liked her flashback to her and Silas because even though we didn't like her and Silas as a couple, we have to remember that she actually cared about Silas. You know what I mean? From the moment they met to, you know, their little relationship or whatever. So she did care about him and it was good that they had that flashback of the two of them even when they first met. So that was a good thing. Um, I like Sam and Patrick's relationship, how they just sit there, eat pizza, drink wine, watch movies. Like It's a normal relationship. Her relationship with, J with Jason was so polar opposite. Like her and Jason, I don't think would ever do that. Sit there and watch a movie and eat pizza and drink wine. It wasn't really Jason. You know what I mean? Like, but I think that's what made their relationship so unique. 
you know, like it made Sam and Jason's relationship different. And that's what I also liked about their relationship. But I do like to see her in a relationship with Patrick because it's a normal relationship. Whereas her relationship with Jason was far from normal. I mean, they would go around and go after bad guys like Jerry Jacks for kicks. I mean, like seriously, their relationship was far from normal. But now that she has a child, it's good that her life mellows out. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just better that way. Um. So what else happened in this damn episode? I think that's everything I want to say. See, they got too many characters in the show where I just be forgetting shit. Um, anyway, I have a question. So what do you think is going to happen when Savinir? I'm pretty sure he's more comfortable at his house. But where's Jocelyn and all of this? Like, she's been engaged for a few weeks now, and there's been no talk or seen like Jocelyn's been MIA. I'm like, what does Jocelyn think about Sonny being her stepdad? Like... She hated Franco, so what is her thoughts on Sonny? Like, that's my question. See, this is the stuff that the writers need to put in here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they need to show some consistency. Like, just put it in there. Even if it's one day of her coming on the show saying something, like, just show her reaction. Like, it's better that way. Morgan is a fucking idiot where Denise is concerned. I really don't care about this whole triangle between him, Denise, Ava, and Kiki. I don't care. It's boring. But um anyway, I think that's everything. If I'm forgetting something, let me know. Um I love the ending the uh not the ending, but the ending to this episode, the montage. I loved it. Where Silas the ghost was pouring Ava a drink. I loved it. Um anyway, let me know what you all think. I'll see you all later. Have a great day.